It's the big chill and thrill of winter wipeout here at 5.35. Right now, though, on BBC One, a bit earlier than planned, Gabby Logan has your final score. He was one of the heroes of the afternoon. Uh, applause from the away supporters. Go. The latest score is women go through the professional. John Terry's tears, we all remember. Well, two crucial weeks. Welcome to Final Score. We've been enjoying an afternoon of twists and turns across the Premier League. Garth Crooks can twist, Martin Keown can turn, but enough of their Britain's Got Talent auditions. Let's bring you right up to speed with what is going on in the Premier League and what's been going on because the lunchtime kickoff was at Carrow Rose in the Premier League. And I can tell you it's Everton 1, Blackburn 0. Tim Cahill's first goal for more than a year has put Everton ahead. And Clint Dempsey has just put Fulham ahead against Newcastle. Uh, Guthrie's super opener for Newcastle being cancelled out now by two Fulham goals, including a Murphy penalty as well. Uh, QPR got two goals in the first half, nothing yet in the second, but it's 2-0 uh, up for Mark Hughes in his debut in the Premier League at Loftus Road. Helgerson and Bazaki, the scorers at Stoke are trailing to a West Brom goal to Neil Morrison, the scorer there. The wind may have played a part in that, or it may have been a bit of goalkeeping, uh, uh, a goalkeeping fault there. But let's uh, move on to Sunderland. Uh, they're one nil up against Swansea. Sessegnon with a beautifully taken goal there. And Wolves, Aston Villa. What an afternoon it's been there. Robbie Keane marking his first Premier League start for Villa with the equaliser after Wolves were 2-1 up. And we're going to go straight, though, to Craven Cottage, to Tony Husband, to hear about that Fulham goal. Yes, Fulham have really turned this game round in the second half. Two goals since the break. Newcastle, good value for their half-time lead, which came courtesy of Danny Guthrie's fine goal on the stroke of the interval. But since the break, Fulham uh, revived, really, by Martin Yole. Uh, they got level from the penalty spot. Danny Murphy sending the keeper the wrong way after Damien Duff was fouled just inside the penalty area. And then moments ago, Clint Dempsey on the follow-up after Bobby Zamora's shot had been saved by Tim Krull. The ball that effectively just fell in into the lap of Dempsey, he just needs to make sure that uh, he could direct the ball into an open net. And so Fulham have turned it round in the second half here. Somewhat against the run of play, Newcastle will feel aggrieved at this. They played well in the first half, but they're 2-1 down now. Well, you can hear about that Coventry goal there against Middlesbrough. That's really against the run of form, that uh, scoreline at the moment. But we're going to stick with the Premier League and go to Molyneux. I said Andrew James has had a, a busy, topsy-turvy afternoon. And the last time we spoke to you, a serious injury as well. That's right, uh, Gabby. The, uh, the news on that is that Emmanuel Frimpong of Wolves, who was uh, out of action for six minutes or so, uh, seemed to take a blow to the head as he went into a near post header. He was uh, stretched away a few moments ago after all that attention from the paramedics, had oxygen uh, to his uh, face, an oxygen mask to his face, and has gone straight in an ambulance uh, away to hospital. Let's hope he's OK. The game itself, Darren Bent's 99th Premier League goal from the penalty spot for Aston Villa early on after he was fouled by Christian. Uh, Christoph Berra uh, was cancelled out by a Wolves fight back in which uh, Michael Kitely, who's had so many injury problems, got the equalising goal, a lofted shot across the face of uh, Shea Given. And then Dave Edwards from a set piece from a corner as the ball came over. Edwards, who'd been standing straight in front of Given, got the rebound as the ball came out and headed Wolves ahead. Wolves, sir, though, penned back by Robbie Keane's goal for 2-2 just a few moments ago. Robbie Keane, of course, who started his career here at Wolves 14 years ago on his return and debut with Villa has got the equalising goal. Anybody's game this one, it's 2-2, Gabby. And Robbie Keane is the seventh Premier League player to score for six different clubs. Uh, Garth and Martin are just struggling to remember the other six. I'm sure they'll get there. Uh, let's go to Loftus Road. Jonathan Ledyard has been uh, royally entertained this afternoon and the referee hasn't dominated proceedings. He hasn't. Mark Hughes will be happy with what his team has done as much as the referee because he's looking inside of his first league win on his league debut for Queen's Park Rangers here at Loftus Road and Wigan frankly showing few signs of leaving the bottom of the table. Two first half goals caused by two avoidable fouls and bookings have 
had the visitors rocking, really. First, James McCarthy clearly handled from a corner. Helgerson bagged his ninth goal of the season from the penalty spot. And then Gahori brought DJ Campbell. And Bozaki curled in a free kick from 25 yards. Watch match of the day. It's an absolute gem. And it could have been 3-0 from the same player. Wonderful volley, which Al Habsi just got his hands to for another corner. We're going to got two forwards on now. They're as diligent as ever, but nothing to show for it. What about Kevin Phillips, by the way, as an answer to you? With the uh, six players who, or seven players who got um, no. who scored for six Premier League games? No, goal? no, no, oh, okay. no. Good try, good try. They've got one in the intervening period. Not that they weren't listening to your every word. Peter Crouch was one of the six. Uh, they're struggling though. Five more to get. Let's go to Goodison Park because that score line there uh, is not good for Blackburn Rovers either. Uh, they're trailing at Goodison Park, and Richard Ascombe is watching this one. Yes, they are, Gabby, but uh, they're on the attack at the moment. They have played the better football. Everton have rather huffed and puffed overall. Um, but the headline news, of course, is that goal for Tim Cahill. It's 34 matches since he last found the net for the Blues. It was a, a tap-in, but he celebrated it rather like it was the winner in a cup final. You can't blame him. December 2010, the last time he found the net for the Blues. Blackburn hit the post in the first half, had several other very good chances as well. Uh, David Dunn in particular, who's gone off and been replaced Placed by Marrow for Micah. Royston Drenter is on for Everton as well. Uh, on that uh, quiz question, Gabby, Andy Cole is my uh, suggestion. We've just got Andy Cole. What you Please. you didn't know that. Oh. They've just they've just got Andy Cole. They've got oh, Les Fern and they've got Peter Crouch. They've got three more to get. It's painful this. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you about the uh, Birmingham City goals in just a moment. We'll go to that match. And also uh, Mark McGee, good start for him. Bristol Rovers with a two 0 lead at Wadden Road now. Uh, but let's go to Ivan Gaskell. I bet he knows one of them. But tell us about your game first at the Britannia. Well, I know it wasn't me. That's that's for kickoff. Um, I could tell you that we're into the last quarter uh, of this one, and you rather sense that despite all of the trials and tribulations that Stoke have suffered this afternoon, that maybe a late rally is on the cards. The howling gale that swirled around Stoke in these last few hours has uh, been mastered really though by West Brom, rather more than their opponents in the first two or three quarters of this game. As I speak, I'll pause as another shot goes whipping across the face of Stoke's goal. And talking of howlers, it suitably describes the moment that gifted West Brom their goal. James Morrison's speculative shot squirmed away from the Stoke keeper, Thomas Sorensen, and left him rather squirming with embarrassment too. Morrison has also struck the woodwork twice. West Brom on top here, but stand by for that Lake Stoke rally. 1-0. Ivan, thank you very much. The goals are flying in the Premier League. Craven Cottage first, Tony Husband. And what a rally from Fulham. 3-1 up now. Clint Dempsey set up by Bobby Zamora. Low finish away to Tim Krull's right. A big turnaround since half-time. Dempsey's 13th of the season. Fulham 3-1 up now. Nine goals in 11 games for him. Let's go to Loftus Road. Jonathan Ledger with another goal. Another goal, but it's not gone to Queen's Park Rangers. It's gone to Wigan with another stunning free kick in this game. Pretty much in the same sort of place that Bozaki gave Rangers a 2-0 lead. Hugo Rodiega, what a free kick. I don't think Paddy Kenny saw it. Probably didn't even know he'd taken it. Either way, first thing he knew is at the back of the net and in front of the 392 Wigan fans, I counted them all, it's now 2-1 to Rangers. Oh, it's going to be uh, an interesting 20 minutes or so. Let's go to the Stadium of Light. Steve Sutton. Still that one goal separating the sides, Gabby. That first half goal from uh, Sessignon, a beautifully uh, taken goal. Watch that one on Match of the Day. The epitome of uh, a, a striker taking his time and being calm. Exactly what Scott Clinclair, Sinclair didn't do at the other end a minute previously. It's uh, all Swansea in this uh, second half, but it's still 1-0 to Sunderland. Thank you very much. Sessignon's was a great goal. There have been some cracking goals this afternoon. What's your favourite so far? Well, I was pleased for the Kitely for Wolves. Been out a long time. Really, it's a bit just of a cheap goal though, as Garth. Cheap, wasn't but it? then it was good improvisation. He dummies to shoot, comes in on his left foot and tucks it in the corner. So, you know, I suppose Session is, is the other one that was an outstanding mm. goal. But he's really Zaki, that, QPR, he? great free kick. Mm. Guthrie, great free kick. Although they're three-one down at Craven Cottage. There's been some fantastic but goals. They've done it again. They did it against Arsenal. They came the, back three-one winners. Everton they came back against Everton against, yeah. against yeah. Liverpool. It's ever since they've finished the Ma Europa Cup. It's all Martin been Martin sent them back out for the start of the second half very early. Listen, with. it could even it could be more at Craven Cottage. Tony Husband, <laughs> a penalty. Oh, yeah, penalty. Andrew Johnson brought down in the penalty area by Tim Krull, the Newcastle keeper. It's all eyes on Lee Mason, the referee. Now, what colour card he's going to produce for the Newcastle keeper? It's a yellow card. 
there must have been enough covering defenders so Newcastle don't go down to 10 men but they are on the brink of going 4-1 down here in the second half an extraordinary turnaround from Martignol's men Newcastle the better team in the first period leading through Danny Guthrie it was a penalty that got them back in it it's Zamora now for four and it is 4-1 to Fulham it's surely game over a remarkable turnaround in 20 second half minutes Oh, what an incredible uh, turnaround. Uh, Zamora there, today Capello's there watching Zamora. I mean, you know, you'd have your eye on the keeper, though, isn't it? With his Fulham foot, the way he afternoon. raises his foot crawl, he's lucky to stay on the pitch there. I mean, it's Andy Johnson who does buy lots of penalties, but I think there he just can't get out of the way of that. Uh, yeah, I think Crawl's lucky to stay on the field, but he does. Good luck to him. But the star of the show today for Creators and Cottage for me is Clint Dempsey. Outstanding. You can see there, Aberdeen have taken the lead at Ibrox. Ian Turner. Yes, they haven't won here since 1991, but as you quite rightly say, Gabby, Aberdeen have taken the lead. They've had a great start to the second half. It's been end to end, but Aberdeen creating lots of chances. It was a break from Chris Clark. He fed Carry Arnas and the Aberdeen captain for the day, and he curled a beautiful shot just outside Alan McGregor's outreached arm into the corner to silence the 45,000 odd inside Ibrox. It's Rangers nil, Aberdeen one. Uh, let's go to the Rika. They're rock bottom, Coventry, but the goals are raining in, Steve Lee. Yes, Coventry 3, Borough 1. A real nightmare afternoon for Borough and Tony Mowbray. They're having a real shocker at the Rika Arena. 3-1 down and reduced to 10 men after Kevin Thompson sending off in the uh, first half. The story of the game, Gary McSheffrey got Coventry's first. Then Thompson was sent off in the second half. A, a barrage of goals from Coventry. Alex Nimley on loan from Manchester City headed their second. And then Clive Platt just a few moments ago steered in their third. Scott McDonald's just pulled one back for Borough. We've had four goals here, plenty of excitement. But Borough, who's, uh, who are near the top of the table, are losing 3-1 to the bottom club. They started the day fourth, they're losing. Cardiff started today third, they're losing. Jason Mohamed. Well, Gabby, it's not just Middlesbrough having a shocker today. Cardiff City are having a terrible day at the office. Quite how Portsmouth are 2 enough today would baffle even the most passionate Pompey supporters. Outplayed for much of this game, they've used their experience, their nous, and capitalised on some dreadful Cardiff City defending. Kenny Miller put the home side in front. Darcy Blake should have made it 2-0 a few moments later. Just before the break, Mario Futax got his third of the season, when Cardiff City keeper David Marshall dropped the ball right in front of the big striker. It's really knocked the confidence out of the Bluebirds. They look uncertain. They look shaky. Greg Halford has given Pompey an excellent chance of only their second away win. Cardiff City 1, Portsmouth 2. Well, the teams that started in 5th and 6th in the Championship are playing at the Majeski. There's a goal, Mark Bishop. Highly contentious decision, Gabby. Reading nil, Hull City 1. Let me just tell you the goal scorer. It's been given to Robbie Brady. But Aaron McLean and Brady controversially not given offside. It looked they were miles offside. No flag given by the assistant referee near side. Referee allowed play to continue. It was two against the keeper, Federici. And all Brady had to do was to smash the ball into the back of the net. Watch it on the Football League show. Lots of questions will be asked after this game is finished. Reading nil, Hull City 1. Mark, thank you very much. It's they can barely penalty. keep their shirts on. It's the wind is so ferocious at the Britannia. And Ivan Gaskell, now That's penalty. Unbelievable. I, I, I'm just a little bit surprised, to say the least, about a decision I've just seen here. It's really not easy for me, having seen it once in real time. The referee was an awful lot closer than I was. But from here, Gareth McCall is challenged on John Walters, which has now resulted in a Stoke penalty. It looked a fair challenge, and I can't really believe I've seen the penalty given, but maybe you guys will have seen a better view. Anyway, the facts are that Walters will step up in the wind, strikes and saved! Saved by Foster! And what a save it was! And you know what? West Brom have deserved every inch of that moment. I was going to say of luck, but actually that was a superb piece of goalkeeping from Foster. It's been a, a real battering in the last ten minutes. West Brom are standing tall, and well they might, in the swirling wind, Stoke still trail 1-0. Justice vindication, were you happy with <laughs> Justice that? Justice vindication, all of those words. You've got to watch this on match day tonight. <laughs> it is the worst penalty yeah. you'll ever see. We all make mistakes. Anthony Taylor, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's embarrassing. Describe it. Well, it's, the guy's gone to, the, for, to win the ball, and I think it's Walters, isn't it? And Walters. He, just, he crumbles up as if he's hit the, the ball's hit him in the midriff, and it hasn't. And it's, he's given a penalty for it. It's just getting The defender has got to the ball first, mm. and Walters has collided into the defender. 
and the referees decided to give the penalty. You've got to see it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> We've got to go back. Oh, you can see there it's on the video prints. We've got to go back to Jason Mohammed though, because Cardiff have got the equaliser. And it's their captain, Mark Hudson, cross from the left-hand side. Hudson, the centre-half, up in the attack, rose high above the Portsmouth back four and headed the ball into the net. It's 2-2. They have a lifeline. A penalty at Loftus Road, Jonathan Ledgeyes. Queen's Park Rangers have a penalty. It's deja vu. It's Helgerson who was involved in the penalty instant against Al Habsi. He scored the first one to give Rangers the lead. Here he comes to give Rangers a 3-1 advantage. And it's saved! Al Habsi saves it! And it's not even a corner. The Rangers players cannot believe it. The Wigan players got to congratulate their goalkeeper. They would claim that's justice done because Gary Coldwell, in their eyes, did not commit no foul at all on Helgerson. He was judged by the referee, John Moss, to have held Helgerson as the ball was played into the area just very much on the edge of the penalty area. Straight away, John Moss said penalty, but it's been saved. So, we've got 18 minutes to go as... Buzaki fires a shot just past the goal, and it's still 2-1. Wigan's still in it. They're flying in. West Ham have doubled their lead. Rangers have got one back. It's one apiece against Aberdeen, and there's a goal at Goodison Park. Richard Askham. Yes, it's an equaliser for Blackburn Rovers, Gabby. Slightly controversial, I think. Tim Howard going for a, a long ball. He rather misjudges it, actually, just seeing it on the replay. And Zonzi was uh, challenging him, but I, I don't think from my ankle and Zonzi fouled him either way Tim Cahill was on the line kept it out just about and Good Willie charging in somehow the ball hit him somewhere in the midriff and went over the uh, over the line lots to talk about with that goal but either way it's Everton 1 Blackburn 1 Good Willie with the goal and did you see that where well, did Good Willie score that goal from <laughs> <laughs> well, all, oh! all credit all credit to him really it's been a bad challenge i believe it's uh, at, out of order Molyneux. OK, red card. He's out of Molyneux, order. Andrew James. It's a red card, and uh, given the headlines about this player, you might not be surprised to hear that it's Carl Henry. Seven yellows this season. It's actually his uh, first red, but he can have no complaints looking at the pictures. It was a bit of silly business out on the far side from us here. It was Mark Albrighton that seemed to be impeding Henry, who was trying to cut inside of him. Albrighton seemed to be stopping his progress, but quite clearly from the television pictures, and right in front of referee Michael Oliver... Henry just flicked his heel, his right heel seemingly, right into the midriff, or goodness knows where, of Mark Albrighton. And Michael Oliver had no hesitation in showing a red card to Carl Henry. Wolves, who were about to make a substitution to send on Sylvan Evans Blake, are now down to ten men. And it's still 2-2, Gabby. Undoubtedly, he did back heel him, but Albrighton at the moment is bent over as if somebody's just, you know, punched him yeah. in the chest for and five it, minutes. It wasn't quite that bad, was it? And the referee is, in, is give a free kick, and he was going to deal with that situation. What Henry's done at 2 2 at a pivotal part of the game is. Un is, is in, in, OK, he's untangled himself with. Was it Albrighton? Yes. And then back heeled him. In his chest. It's a challenge. It's a high challenge, but it's a clear oh, sending off. No excuse. It's for sending that. off at Ellen Road. Uh, Alex McCarthy, and now a goal. Damien Johnson. Yes, it's all going on here. Uh, the goalkeeper sent off for uh, coming out of his area. Deliberate handball as Sonko headed back to him. Got his bearings all wrong, and Leeds are back in the game because uh, their top scorer. Uh, Snodgrass has just turned the ball into the net. They were booed off at half-time Leeds. They trailed early on to a, a goal in the first half from Drury. Shocking goalkeeping error from their own goalkeeper, Andy Lonigan. But Snodgrass has got them back in the game, 1-1. Two gales in two games for Snodgrass. Let's go to London Road, where Peaceborough are getting right back into it. Tony Lockwood. They are, Gabby. Their manager, Darren Ferguson, made three changes on game. McCann and Ball and Newell. And just a couple of moments ago, Ball the substitute on the end of Tunnicliffe's cross to convert the ball expertly past the goalkeeper, Peter Preservan. They'd led on half an hour with a free-kick goal by Will Buckley that deceived the posh keeper, Joe Lewis. But Peterborough are right back in it. David Ball's equaliser to tie it up at 1-1 at London Road. Sean Massey. OK, let's go to Upton Park. Mark <laughs> Webber can tell us about the second West Ham goal. I can indeed. West Ham 2, Forest nil. Hammers been knocking on the top spot for a while, now seemingly bagging it. Forest not flailing, on fire with numerous chances today, but they've been undone by their own handiwork. Handball, namely. Chris Gunter handled the ball in the area just now. Noble scored the penalty. History repeating itself from the end of the first half when Moosey handled the ball and Noble struck home. West Ham 2, Forest nil. 
Uh, Sheffield Wednesday now 2-1 up against Hartlepool. Uh, but we're going to go to the SPL and Rangers uh, have got a goal back. Ian Turner, all square. Yes, all square. And we've got a very exciting last 18 minutes here at a wind-drenched Ibrox because Morris Edu has pulled Rangers right back into this game. It only took them five minutes after the Aberdeen opener. He got the ball 20 yards out. It was a fine shot. It was going in anyway. He took a slight deflection and left Jason Brown in the Aberdeen goal absolutely help helpless. Good game, 1-1. OK, let's get the reaction from that lunchtime kickoff uh, in the Premier League at Carrow Road. Guy Mowbray asking the questions. Paul, what's your assessment of that? You must be delighted with the, the first clean sheet, first of all. I am, Guy. I think we, um, we defended resolutely when we had to. We've got an unbelievable spirit in the team, or, or the, the group. And um, I'm not just saying that the 18 lads, it's everybody at the football club has seemed to be going the same way. And um, I thought we were well worthy of a point. Yeah, we had a lot of... A lot of defending to do, but you're up against a team that's a top top side. And um, the way we've come from two years ago, as I said before, we were playing no disrespect to, to, against Walsall and Yeovil and people like that. Then they, I thought we were well worthy a point. Fernando Torres at the moment must feel like he's cursed. Nothing is quite happening for him. Well, I think Rudy had a, a fantastic game today. He saved his shot in the first half and then saved a couple of other situations in the second half. Uh, again, it doesn't matter who has the opportunities. The most important thing for us is to have them and, uh, and, uh, and, and score them. Um, again, uh, it, it's a point against uh, Norwich that uh, it was motivated and getting good results. And uh, uh, it's not bad, but it's not enough regarding our, our title challenge. And, um, and it makes things very, very difficult. Zach, take us through a, a defender's mindset. Is that as good as scoring a hat trick for you? Yeah, well, it was nice to get a clean sheet. As I say, it's been a, a little bit overdue. So, I, you know, I thought the shape, you know, from the whole team was, you know, spot on today. But, you know, it's nice to, nice to get the first one of the season and hopefully won't be the last now. Let's just reflect briefly on that match. I think um, Andrew Villafos was wrong about it. Torres wasn't fantastic today. He's working very hard, but he wasn't fantastic. I think the response was, was, should have been that all he needs now is a goal to his game. And that's what, he's, that's what he's missing. That's what Chelsea are missing. They're missing someone to lead that line. He's supporting his player, though, isn't he, publicly? Demonstrating that he still believes in him. And, he, you know, Jogba being away, the African nations, he needs him to start scoring goals and quickly. But if you're going to keep, if he's going to keep storage out on the, 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 the right, and, he's, and when Drogba comes back and, and he keeps pursuing with Torres, Torres has got to score goals. OK, let's hear about that Darius Henderson hat-trick there at Oakwell. Andy Barwell's there. Millwall had six scored against them last weekend. Are they looking to uh, redress that completely today, do you think? Yes, they are, just hovering above the relegation zone, but they hadn't scored in their last five away league games. But they lead 3-0 here at Barnsley. As we mentioned, a Darius Henderson hat-trick, the first on the penalty spot. Minutes later, he added a second with a well-taken goal. And now in this uh, second half, a third, a mistake in the Barnsley defence. It let in Henderson. He blasted it home. Another terrific finish. He took off his shirt to celebrate, got a caution. Not that he'll be too worried about that. And it's Barnsley nil, Millwall 3. Third hat-trick of the season. What a goal. Jonathan Ledyard, Loftus Road. It's a possible winner for Queen's Park Rangers. An absolutely storming goal by Queen's Park Rangers. Scorer Tommy Smith coming on as a second-half substitute. Just let rip. There was no chance that Al Hapsi was going to go for that. Suddenly Loftus Road is alight again and alive, rather, because at one stage after Wigan had seen that penalty saved by Al Hapsi, they were worried at 2-1 down. Now it's 3-1, 10 minutes to go. What have Wigan got in their tank and can Queen's Park Rangers keep their foot firmly on Wigan's body? 3-1. Thank you very much. Mark Hughes will like what he's seen another, so far. Another stunning goal, Tommy Smith coming off the bench and uh, all credit to him, it's a great finish. It's been it? some of the best goals today. Yeah you'll ever see. Match of the day has got to be a must. Goals are flying in from everywhere and they're just great strikes. And a couple of contentious two-footed tackles as well. Yeah, I thought Wes Brown definitely oh. contentious. Larson, Larson. Larson. You know, they were yeah. very lucky to say, say no, to, not to be sent off. If you're a Manchester City fan and you watch that tonight, mm -hmm. you'll be very upset. El Hadjouf has got one <clears> back for Doncaster Rovers at Ashton Gate. Hamish Marshall. Well, all of the second half has pretty much been one-way traffic for Bristol City. But as you say, Doncaster back into this. A lovely looping header from El Hadjouf after a cross from the left-hand side. Went over David James. In five first half minutes, the home side twice took the lead in this crucial encounter. Chris Wood and Khalifa Cisse with headers. Um, and then in that five-minute spell as well, Habib I was also sent off for Doncaster but they've survived the storm they've got 13 minutes left that are goal down it's Bristol City 2 Doncaster 1 uh, let's check in with Steve May we haven't been seen for quite a while Birmingham with the lead against Watford 
Yes, uh, Gabby, uh, Birmingham still leading here by two goals to, to nil. About 15 minutes or so ago, Chris Burke sent in a shot which was deflected off a Watford shirt for a corner. Much took that corner. It went straight to Curtis Davis at the far post. Fifth goal of the season. He's having some afternoon because only half an hour before that, he got his fourth goal of the afternoon. A close-range header after Watford had failed to deal with a left-wing corner from Much. It's uh, very much Birmingham's game. I can't see Watford getting back into this at all. Birmingham now going on an eight match and beat and run if they win this they could go fifth they uh, will go sixth uh, it very much depends on the score at uh, the reading hull game but they're doing all they can here they're leading by two goals to nil and it's curtis davis who's got both of them and now before this match at turf Moor, derby had won five on the bounce burnley eight out of ten nas prem g's there today difficult to separate them it certainly is and it's a really entertaining game so far burnley nil derby county nil the conditions playing a part burnley had the win with them in the first half derby have got the win with them in the second half chances at both ends sean barker's had a couple of headers which have just flashed wide charlie austin had a shot which whistled wide and a shot from rodriguez from the left hand side which frank fielding expertly saved off the line it's a super save watch it tonight on the Football League show. Still goalless, but really entertaining stuff here at Turf Moor. So Crystal Palace are 90 minutes away from Wembley. They play uh, that second leg against Cardiff on Tuesday. James Mason's at Bloomfield Road, where they're the visitors, uh, but they're not taking their foot off the gas, are they? Certainly not. And nine changes Doogie Friedman made ahead of that game on Tuesday. So perhaps Blackpool nil, Crystal Palace won is a surprise scoreline. Nine new faces in total, as I mentioned. And as a result, Blackpool have dominated from start to finish for much of the game. But they did go behind to an Owen Garvin penalty midway through the first half when Blackpool captain Barry Ferguson handled in the area. Blackpool should be level though, having had a penalty claim themselves turned down whilst missing a string of chances with Ludovic Sylvester and Kevin Phillips seen very good strikes, well said by Lewis Price. We've got seven minutes to go, it's Blackpool nil, Crystal Palace won. He's got it's an unbelievable uh, let's go straight to Molyneux, Andrew James with goal news. Yeah, Robbie Keane's done it again for Aston Villa and it looks like uh, the former Wolves man, of course, he started his career 14 years ago. The man who's on loan for seven weeks from the LA Galaxy, Robbie Keane, has just lashed the ball in from distance, high into the roof of the Wolves net. Wolves down to 10 men. They were 1-0 down, came back to lead 2-1. But two goals from Robbie Keane on his full Villa debut have left Villa leading at the Molyneux by three goals to two. Now, it might be too late for a comeback, but at Craven Cottage, Tony Husband's just seen a cracking goal. Well, we've got five interesting minutes, 4-2 now. Hatton Ben Arthur getting Newcastle in with perhaps just a sniff of getting back into this one. Drilled left foot shot to the near post beating Stockdale. 4-2, you never know, it's been a bizarre second half. We seem to have lost Tony there, but um, you do need to watch Match of the Day tonight, trust me, because that is probably about oh, seventh on the list of fantastic goals. Fantastic goals. goals. <laughs> Amazing yeah, goal, absolutely. though. Uh, Leeds have taken the lead, Ipswich's goalkeeper off, and, and Leeds uh, two goals ever since. Ross McCormack on 82 minutes, and Birmingham now 3 0 up. Just very briefly, Robbie Keane's goal there for Foot Villa goal. into the lead uh, at Molyneux. Uh, You'd got four of the other players. Mm. Yeah. I'll give you a clue. One of them is managing a team in the Championship today. Oh, thanks. Nope, OK. Uh, mm. Let's go to Ivan Gaskell at the Britannia Stadium. Is it a goal? It is. Stoke City have equalised. It's been coming. I suspected there'd be a rally. It's been increasingly tough for West Brom. They've defended so well. I can't help but feel a shred of real sympathy for them. Roy Hodgson's just kicked an imaginary bottle on the side. That won't have done him any good. 1-1, Jerome up off the bench and a typical Stoke 1-2 across from the right. Jerome was quickest, got his head to it, fine header downwards. Foster, difficult for him to do anything about it. And West Brom are going to rue some chances they've missed in this game. They should have put it to bed, they haven't, and now they paid the ultimate price. It's 1-1. Thank you, Ivan. Let's go to Bloomfield Road. Another goal there, James Mason. An equaliser for Blackpool, and it's the Frenchman, Elliot Grandin, who scored one of three substitutions made by um, Ian Holloway, and it was a wonderful individual goal, and I wouldn't bet against Blackpool with four or five minutes left to go on and win this. Blackpool won, Crystal Palace won. Uh, so, you've got Nicky Barmby. That means you've got one more to get okay. on the list. Okay. Of, uh, by the way, this list, that this quiz that they're uh, playing, is uh, in the light of the fact that Robbie Keane has become the seventh Premier League player to score for six Premier League clubs. 
In League One at the Valley, Charlton still with the lead, John Anderson. Yes, they still have that lead given to them by Johnny Jackson's sumptuous first half free kick, but uh, Sheffield United have had a couple of chances to get themselves back into this game. Top scorer Chad Evans came into this one with 14 goals in his last 14 games, but he's ruining a bad miss, lofting over after a corner was spilt by Ben Hamer, and they've also seen the visitors, a Richard Treswell header, go uh, wide of the post, and uh, the referee is uh, involved at the moment in a melee in the centre of the pitch. Every player on the pitch is converging on the centre circle. Somebody has been sent off, or will be sent off, because the referee has a red card in his hand. Uh, I think we'll have to wait to untangle and find out who it was. But Charlton, with six minutes left, are still leading by a goal to nil in this top-of-the-table clash. Unbelievable goal at the Stadium of Light. Steve Sutton. Well, you know, you've been talking about uh, great goals, Gabby. Well, as you say, we've just had another absolute uh, belter. It's increased Sunderland's lead by two. Sessignon got the one in the first half. His was an absolute classic. But this one from all of about 30 yards out, Craig Gardner, second half substitute, got the ball, unleashed it into the net, keeper form, no chance at all. Sunderland 2, Swansea nil, and against the run of play in the second half. I know goals are our business, but we really are recording record Fantastic. profits today. Let's go to Craven Cottage for another Tony Husband. And it's an individual goal and a hat-trick for Clint Dempsey. He was put through the middle. He's outpaced the Newcastle defence. A cool finish. A hat-trick in the second half for the American. All over now, Fulham 5, Newcastle 2. His 10th goal in 11 he's games. He's now officially a top player as well. You see him run through. He's got loads to do. He's done it from the halfway line. And he finds a great finish, doesn't he, at the end for of For me, it? he's been a top player for some time. But it's a wonderful way to crown your hat-trick. He outpaces Colicini from the halfway line mm -hmm. and then just coolly puts it past the keeper. I think Gardner's is a better goal, though. Hits across it, doesn't he? Yes, Martin O'Neill nearly jumps out of the ground. That's them winning again 2-0. By the way, the one that you name you're looking for, he's playing today. Uh, let's go oh. to Elland Road. Damien Johnson, the goal went through a while ago, but you can tell us all about it. Leads with the lead. Yes, that's right. It's a fantastic turnaround for uh, Leeds United. They trailed 1-0 at half-time, booed off, but uh, goals in the second half from Snodgrass. And as you say, just a moment ago, from the top scorer, Ross McCormack, his 13th of the season, through ball, rounded the uh, substitute keeper, Aaron Lee Barrett, who's on as a sub because uh, Alex McCarthy was sent off for a deliberate handball a little bit earlier. And, uh, yeah, McCormack uh, took his goal very coolly, and United now in control, 2-1. Uh, John Anderson's equipment uh, failed a little bit at the Valley, so tell us who did get that red card. Well, the red card was handed initially to uh, Daryl Russell of uh, Charlton Athletic, the substitute, but they were only a man short for a few minutes because James Beatty has also been uh, sent off for Sheffield United. It all centred on a challenge uh, in the middle of the field. The referee had to sort out who did what, and uh, Russell was first to go, and then shortly after that, James Beatty, who'd only been on the field for a matter of minutes, was shown the red card as well. There have been a flurry of yellows as well. Uh, it's been a chaotic end to this match, but it's a match which Charlton are hoping to hang on to to extend their lead at the top to seven points. It's Charlton one, Sheffield United nil. It's ten aside. Ivan Gaskell, Britannia, a goal. A minute into stoppage time with two more to play and West Brom have taken the lead again here. Graham Doran's a free kick on the edge of the box. He had a lot to do, but I've got to say there'll be some questions in that Stoke City dressing room. How on earth did that one find its way into the corner of Sorensen's net? It's not been a good day at the office for him, but West Brom, in my view, thoroughly deserved 2-1 leaders. Uh, let's go to London Road. Tony Lockwood, have you got a winner? It's a dramatic conclusion. It's Will Buckley. He'd given Brighton the lead on 32 minutes with a 45-yard free kick. That lead cancelled out by David Ball. It was 1-1, and Buckley has struck with a right foot drive into the bottom corner and has surely won it for Brighton. It'll be their fourth win over Peterborough. It's Brighton 2, Peterborough 1. They had the lead for so long, Crystal Palace at Bloomfield Road, James Mason. But credit to you, you predicted that Blackpool could get another. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Cabby. I don't get many things wrong, uh, right, even, should I say. But Crystal, uh, Crystal Palace have collapsed. Blackpool 2-1 up now. Chris Basham, another substitute from Ian Holloway. And they look like they've got the three points now. James, well, Palace, of course, have got another chance uh, on Tuesday night. They're 90 minutes from Wembley and they're live on the BBC come the end of the evening at one of those teams, Cardiff 
or uh, Crystal Palace will be on their way to Wembley. On the menu this week. Which one of these championship hopefuls will go on to face a premiership giant in the final? The League Cup semi-final second leg. Cardiff City versus Crystal Palace. Tuesday at 7.30 on BBC Two. And just a reminder, you can see all the goals from your region and catch up with all the latest news on late kickoff on Monday night at 5 past 11. And on a related note, you can hear from some of your local heroes looking for glory at the 2012 London Olympics. Olympic Dreams is this Sunday at 5 o'clock. OK, we're going back to Goodison Park now. Late drama there. Richard yes, Oscar? yes, there has been, Gabby. First of all, Paul Robinson palming away what was uh, should have been a header from Marouane Fellaini. He rather came off his shoulder, though, but was still going in. And then from the resultant corner, Blackburn scrambling the ball away and just clearing a shot off the line. It looks as though this is going to end up in a draw. Blackburn probably deserve it. They fought for everything today. Back to Elland Road, Damien Johnson. Yeah, Leeds United's comeback is complete because uh, they've made it 3-1. Luciano Becchio on as a second-half substitute. Route one, really, out-muscled his man. A long ball from the keeper, rounded uh, the Ipswich town keeper and slotted it home for number three. It's Leeds three, ten men Ipswich one. It's all over at Loftus Road and it's uh, a winning start for Mark Hughes as manager in the Premier League at home, Jonathan Ledgard. Rangers will believe, Wigan though must worry. Both in the bottom three before kick-off, not so now after this scoreline. 3-1 to Queen's Park Rangers. Wigan had opened both halves promisingly, but crucially their season-long failing in front of goal was highlighted apart from Roddy Yeager's wonderful second-half free kick, which gave them hope. Rangers scored from two set pieces, missed another and had substitute Tommy Smith to thank for their third, an unstoppable 25 yarders. Wigan were threatening at 2-1. Enjoy Bozaki's free kick on match of the day, two for Rangers second. Helgerson's first penalty was tidy, his ninth of the season. Poor second one was easily saved. Joey Barton booked, little else contributed by him, perhaps exhausted by tweeting. 3-1 Rangers. <laughs> it's mainly your fingers that do that, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Let's go to the Britannia where it's all over. Uh, the wind has affected play somewhat, Ivan Gaskell, but a fair result for you? Yes, all over here and I think uh, one of the more deserved wins I've seen for some time. West Brom really uh, deserved this. They dug so deep. Uh, one team today exhausted or one player exhausted by tweeting. I think West Brom will just simply be exhausted. They've run their legs off here in the swirling wind and dealt with it better than Stoke. Simple as that. Morrison was instrumental. He scored a goal from distance. I've got to say Sorensen instrumental too. A howling mistake to let it past him. Fumbled it over the line embarrassing and he might ask questions about the winner too Gar Graham Dorans from distance two minutes into injury time Jerome had come on from the bench and headed Stoke back uh, on level terms but in the end West Brom stood tall and deservedly win at last Ivan thank you and uh, a last minute dramatic goal at the Cardiff City Stadium Jason Mohamed unbelievable scenes here Gabby Portsmouth's captain Liam Lawrence is lying on the floor he cannot believe what has happened he's been terrific this afternoon there were barely seconds uh, available for a free kick Peter Whittingham tapped it infield to Craig Conway he ran at the Portsmouth defence hit a right footed shot past the goalkeeper Stephen Henderson utter disbelief on the face of Michael Appleton just a few yards away from me Car City 3, Portsmouth 2. And it's all over at Craven Cottage and you've seen plenty of goals, Tony Osborne, this afternoon. What a match. Incredible stuff, really, Gabby. Six of those goals in the second half. Fulham 5, Newcastle 2. Two hugely contrasting halves. A remarkable comeback from Fulham. And Newcastle, no doubt, shell-shocked, really, by a five-goal pounding in the second period. Clint Dempsey will take the plaudits. A hat-trick for him amongst goals for Danny Murphy and Bobby Zamora, both from the spot in front of a watching Fabio Capello. Newcastle had led after an impressive first half, capped by an excellent goal of their own from Danny Guthrie, his first for three years. No one could have expected the second half turnaround. Newcastle's sole consolation, another fine goal of their own. Hatton Ben Arthur, but it was just about all over by then. 5 2, it's finished at the cottage. Well, all the talk was of Swansea Lona after last week, but at the Stadium of Lights, Steve Sutton, it was Real Sunderland who dominated. 
Yes, it was. Sunderland 2, Swansea 0 and 2. Absolute cracking goals on a day where cracking goals have been going in all over the country. Uh, the first in the first half, Sessignon with an exquisite uh, pass into the top corner of the net. The stats will show that Swansea had most of the possession on, on another day. Dyer and Sinclair would have expected to have scored goals. But then in the second half, late in the second half, Sunderland brought on Craig Gardner and five minutes later, they were 2-0 in the lead. Gardner getting the ball a good 25 yards out. He let fly. The ball whistled into the net. Vaughan reduced to a mere spectator. Sunderland 2, Swansea 0. And it's all over at Goodison Park. Uh, Richard Ascombe has seen the sides share the spoils. Yes, Gabby, a half-time. The headlines were all about Tim Cahill's first goal for 34 matches. At the final whistle, a spirited Blackbird comeback has put that into perspective. The popular Australian looked more like his old self, but Everton were rather disjointed overall after Cahill's tap-in had given them the lead. Blackburn, who'd hit a post and gone close on a couple of occasions, dug in and a mess-up in the Everton box ended with David Goodwillie somehow forcing the ball home. With Petrovic a calming and cultured influence in midfield and the Ho Hoyland always a threat. Blackburn certainly did enough to earn a point thanks to a late Paul Robinson save and a last-ditch clearance off the line. They're still playing at Molyneux. Andrew James, are Wolves going to get something from this? Well, they're pressing hard, Gabby. The last few minutes has been played almost entirely in the Villa box, but the answer to your question is they won't because Michael Oliver has just blown the final whistle. So, booze around the ground here. At Villa, who took the lead through Darren Bent, his 99th Premier League goal from the penalty spot. Wolves getting back with goals from Kitely and Edwards to lead at half-time. But the story is about Robbie Keane. On his full Villa debut, the former Wolves man, of course, scored twice before being substituted and a subplot, the sending off of Carl Henry, stupidly lashing out with his back heel into Mark Albrighton after the Villa man had clearly fouled Henry first. It left at Wolves down to ten men. They couldn't cope, they couldn't fight back and they are now without a win in ten. Villa, though, get three precious away points, unbeaten in five away from home now for Alex McLeish's men on the manager's 53rd birthday. Wolves two, Villa three. As Carl Henry cost Wolves today, Garth certainly thinks so. More comments from you in just a moment. But let's go to the Rico Arena. It's all over there and valuable points for the home side, Steve Lee. Yes, Coventry 3, Borough 1, Tony Mowbray's playoff hopefuls down to nine men at the end and derailed with embarrassing ease by the bottom club. A wretched new year for Borough so far, not a single league point mustered. The story of this one, Gary McSheffrey put Coventry ahead after early Borough domination. Kevin Thompson red-carded for Borough after a second yellow card picked up. Then two quick goals in the second half for Coventry. First on loan, Alex Nimley looped in a header, then Clive Platt converted across from Richard Keogh. The first time Coventry have got three all season. Scott McDonald pulled one back for Borough but there was a late red car when Julio Arca was sent off for a foul on Clingham. Coventry three, Borough one. Thanks Steve. Uh, that's uh, seven yellows and a red for Carl Henry so far this so season. Carl, so when Carl Henry is in the dressing room tonight and he says to his teammates, sorry lads, those seven yellow cards and a red tell its own story. You're letting your teammates down. You're letting your team... They needed you for those last 10, 15 minutes. It could have been a point on the board. You've now got none. Mick McCauley's got to seriously start thinking, who are the boys who are going to get us out of this situation? They've got to be responsible and they've got to be disciplined. Wolves should have got something out of the game today. Positivity, Robbie yeah. Keane. Yeah, Robbie Keane. I mean, he's rolled back the years today. He scores. Maybe he's using the wind, but some of his shots, shooting from distance today was first class. So, you know, he's won them the game, basically. Mm. Three valuable points for Aston Villa at Molyneux today. Uh, let's go to Upton Park. Um, almost over there, Mark Webber. <laughs> We're waiting for my Bob roll. We kicked off late ten minutes. Three minutes of added on time coming up now. Maybe Sam Allardyce's tea was late. West Ham 2, Forest 0. It's a shame West Ham don't make bread, though, because they've proved yet again they know how to grind out a product. Forest feisty for most of the first half and looked like scoring, but when Mark Noble slotted home the penalty from Musa's handball before half-time, the die was really set. Noble repeated that performance when Gunter handled a minutes later. Since then, they've been trying to use set pieces to make it three. I don't think they're going to get that, but we're still waiting. I'm a patient guy. 2-0.
<laughs> you both will can wait. Let's go to the JC because it is all over there, Mark Bishop. Certainly is. Reading nil, Hull City 1 proved an afternoon of high drama. Firstly, five minutes before kickoff, Sir John Medeski, what was he doing? He walked out onto the centre circle with a microphone to announce he was relinquishing control of Reading Football Club after 21 years to a Russian consortium. And then, in the second half, Aaron McLean and Robbie Brady couldn't believe their luck. Both allowed to continue play. Corrin's pass looked as if they put them yards offside. No flag given. McLean and Brady upfield. Federici to beat. And Brady lashed the ball into the back of the net. Reading nil. Hull City won. And there was a big match at the Valley today. Uh, the teams at the top of League One, Charlton and Sheffield United, the home side came out on top. John Anderson. Yes, they did by a goal to nil. Charlton beating Sheffield opposition for the second weekend running to open up a seven-point lead at the top of the table. The winning goal came on 21 minutes. Jamie Jackson, whose stunning free kick beat Wednesday last weekend, did it again, this time giving the Blades a dose of his dead ball deadliness. Creswell, Williamson and Doyle all might have scored for the visitors in the first half. And in the second, their top scorer, Chet Evans, missed the best chance to get a point, sweeping over after Ben Hamer spilled a corner. The match finished 10 aside with Charlton's Daryl Russell and Blades' James Beattie both sent off after a melee. Even then, Matt Lowton could have claimed a point for the Blades. His cross come shot hitting the bar, but it was the last chance of the game. And Charlton take a massive step towards championship football. They've won the battle of the big two in League One by a goal to nil. And uh, let's move up to the SPL. Ian Turner at Ibrox all over there. It is Rangers 1, Aberdeen 1, and the champions have slipped further behind league leaders Celtic. And Aberdeen's 20-year wait for victory at Ibrox is extended, but manager Craig Brown will be absolutely delighted with his side's display. Carrie Arneson gave the Dons hope of ridding his side of their unwanted record with a low curling shot just on the hour, only to see Morris Edu cancel it out five minutes later. Rangers had chances to win it, but the visitors stood firm for a hard one point. It finished at Ibrox. Rangers won, Aberdeen won. And just a quick reminder that final score is now on the BBC HD channel from 2.30 every Saturday, as well, of course, as the red button and the BBC Sport website, so you've got no excuse for missing us. Let's get the full classified results now with Mike West. Starting with the Barclays Premier League. The game between Bolton Wanderers and Liverpool is an evening kickoff at 5.30. Everton 1, Blackburn Rovers 1. Fulham 5, Newcastle United 2. Norwich City 0, Chelsea 0. Queen's Park Rangers 3, Wigan Athletic 1. Stoke City 1, West Bromwich Albion 2. Sunderland 2, Swansea City 0. And Wolverhampton Wanderers 2, Aston Villa, three. In the Empire Championship, Barnsley, one. Millwall, three. Birmingham City, three. Watford, nil. Blackpool, two. Crystal Palace, one. Bristol City, two. Doncaster Rovers, one. Burnley, nil. Derby County, nil. Cardiff City, three. Portsmouth, two. Coventry City, three. Middlesbrough, one. Leeds United 3, Ipswich Town 1, Peterborough United 1, Brighton and Hope Albion 2, Reading 0, Hull City 1, and West Ham United 2, Nottingham Forest 1. In the Empire League 1, AFC Bournemouth 2, Tranmere Rovers 1, Bury 3, Yeovil Town 2, Carlisle United 1, Walsall 1. Charlton Athletic 1, Sheffield United 0. Colchester United 1, Chesterfield 2. Huddersfield Town against Brentford is an evening kickoff at 5.20. Notts County 1, Milton Keynes Dons 1. Oldham Athletic 0, Exeter City 0. Preston North End 0, Leighton Orient 2. Scunthorpe United 1, Stevenage 1. Sheffield Wednesday 2, Hartlepool United 2, and Wickham Wanderers 3, Rochdale 0. In the Empire League 2, Aldershot Town 0, Accrington Stanley 0, Bradford City 1, Burton Albion 1, Cheltenham Town 0, Bristol Rovers 2, Crew Alexandra 4, Dagenham and Redbridge 1, 
Gillingham, three. AFC Wimbledon, four. Morecambe, one. Torquay United, two. Northampton Town, one. Barnet, two. Oxford United, two. Hereford United, two. Plymouth Argyle, one. Crawley Town, one. Rotherham United, nil. Port Vale, one. Shrewsbury Town, two. Southend United, one. And Swindon Town, one. Macclesfield Town, nil. The Blue Square Bet Premier, AFC Telford United, one. Cambridge United, two. Alfreton Town, nil. Kidderminster, two. Braintree Town, two. Stockport County, two. Darlington, nil. Fleetwood Town, one, is a later score. Gateshead, three. Lincoln City, three. Grimsby Town, six. Bath City, nil. Mansfield Town, three. Hayes and Yedding United, two. Newport County, nil. Forest Green Rovers, nil. Southport, three. Luton Town, three. Tamworth, two. Barrow, three. Wrexham, four. Kettering Town, one. And York City, three. Ebbsfleet United, two. On to the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League. Dundee United, one. Motherwell, one. Hibernian, two. St Johnston, three. Inverness Caledonian Thistle, one. Hearts, nil. Kilmarnock, nil. Dunfermline, three. Rangers, one. Aberdeen, one. And St Mirren, nil. Celtic, two. The Iron Brew Scottish Division, one. Air United, two. Hamilton Academical, two. Livingston, two. Queen of the South, two. Partick Thistle, nil. Dundee, nil. And Wraith Rovers, two. Falkirk, two. The match between Ross County and Green at Morton, match postponed. The Scottish Division, two. Airdrie United, two. Dumbarton, three. Arbroath, six. Albion Rovers, one. The match between Brecon City and Stenhouse Muir, match postponed. Forfar Athletic, one. Cowdenbeath, nil. And Stirling Albion, nil. East Fife, one. The Scottish Division, three. Annan Athletic, two. Queen's Park, three. Clyde, nil. Peterhead, one. East Stirlingshire, three. Montrose, one. Elgin City, four. Berwick Rangers, nil. And Stranraer, nil. Allower Athletic, four. Finally, the Carling Premiership. Carrick, two. Glen Torren, two. Colrain, three. Glen Avon, one. Linfield, three. Dungan and Swifts, nil. And Lisbon Distillery, one. Cliftonville, three. And just uh, one late kick-off to tell you about. Uh, Darlington, who've had a tumultuous week, haven't they? Saved uh, from the brink of bankruptcy uh, with 25 minutes to spare, trailing uh, one goal to nil from Fleetwood Town. Let's have a little look at the tables then, starting with the Premier League. And no change at the top because uh, Premier League really showcases its best talent tomorrow. The only leading club to play so far are Chelsea, whom a point leaves them vulnerable in the final Champions League spot. Arsenal can take themselves a, a little bit closer there tomorrow if they can beat Manchester United. Sunderland have crept into the top half. They're the highest placed winners so far today. Wigan remain rooted to the foot of the table. Their day could get worse if Bolton pick up points against Liverpool in the early evening kickoff. And Wigan's conquerors QPR move out of the bottom three above Wolves and Blackburn Rovers. Let's move to the Championship now. And West Ham are the new leaders. Victory over Nottingham Forest means the Hammers are now three points clear of Southampton. The Saints can reclaim the top spot if they beat Leicester on Monday evening. Cardiff are keeping up the pressure on the top two. And that late winner valuable for them. They're now four points clear of Middlesbrough, who lost again today. Hull move into fifth after beating Reading, who slipped out of the playoff places. At the bottom, Coventry won today for just the fifth time this season, but it's not enough to lift them off the bottom of the table. The Sky Blues have at least closed the cap on Doncaster and Nottingham Forest, who both lost to League One. Charlton beat Sheffield United in the battle of the top two. It means the Addicts now lead the table by seven points. Huddersfield can move into the automatic promotion places if they beat Brentford in the tea time kickoff. At the bottom, a rare win for Chesterfield, but they're still stuck to the bottom of the table. Wick Wickham beat Rochdale to move above them. Warsaw edged a point away from danger with a draw today. 
League Two, South End stayed top after a last gasp draw. Crawley move up to second ahead of Cheltenham, who lost. Torquay move into the playoff places at the expense of Gillingham, who slipped to eighth. At the bottom, Northampton stay bottom, but Plymouth move out of the relegation places after earning a point today. Instead, it's a Dagenham and Redbridge side who slip into the relegation zone, and Hereford move another point away from danger after drawing at Oxford. And if we have a little look at the blue square bet, it remains tight with Wrexham and Fleetwood both winning, Luton losing ground in third after they were held to a draw. At the bottom, uh, well all four lost, while Newport and Stockport each picked up a point to move themselves a bit further away from danger. And to the SPL, and those dropped points for Rangers at home to Aberdeen, coupled with the win for Celtic in the lunchtime kick-up at St Mirren, means the gap at the top of the SPL now four points in Celtic's favour. At the bottom, Dunfermline's first win since the start of November means they're now a single point adrift of Hibs, but still they prop up the table. Let's get the headlines then from the Premier League today. And it was Wolves 2, Aston Villa 3. Hero turned Villa. Robbie Keane marks his first Premier League start for Aston Villa with two goals, including a superb winner to knock the Huff and Puff out of his former club, Wolves. Fulham 5, Newcastle 2. Clint makes Fulham's day with a hat trick as the hosts show too much cottage industry for Newcastle. Penalties from Danny Murphy and Bobby Zamora complete the rout. QPR 3, Wigan 1. Mark Hughes making an immediate impression in his first home game in charge at QPR in the league. The hoops move out of the bottom three. Tommy Smith's cracker sealing the victory. Stoke 1, West Bromwich Albion 2. A stoppage time winner from Graham Dorans giving the Baggies their first points in four games. It's only Stoke's second to beat in ten. Sunderland 2, Swansea 0. The future looking bright at the Stadium of Light under Martin O'Neill. Goals by Sessegnon and Gardner lifting Sunderland into the top half of the table. Both goals supreme. Goal. And it finished Everton 1, Blackburn Rovers 1. Tim Cahill's first goal for more than a year put Everton ahead, but it was David Goodwillie who equalised, meaning Rovers return from Goodison with a point. So match of the day tonight on BBC One at 10.20 with Gary, Alan H and Lauro. The Football League show with Manish follows that. And tomorrow Man City, Spurs and Arsenal, Manchester United will be poured over by Colin Lee and Alan Hansen. OK, uh, let's go straight to Molyneux. Steve Wilson is there for us. Uh, busy afternoon, you've had to commentate on there. Um, Gas for one, a little bit cross with Carl Henry, costing his team, he feels, uh, what could have been a valuable point. They've dropped back into the bottom three. Um, yes, I mean, it was, uh, well, it could have been a valuable three points. Don't forget, Wolves were 2-1 up, and deservedly so at half-time. I thought there were two sort of big turning points in the game. The first was a really nasty injury to Emmanuel Frimpong quite early in the second half, trying for a diving header on goal. Stylian Petrov stuck his boot out. No intention at all from Petrov, but it was a horrible bang into uh, Frimpong's head. He was uh, down for a long time, stretched away with an oxygen mask on and taken to hospital with what looks like a really nasty facial injury. So that's one central midfielder gone under very uh, bad circumstances from Wolves' point of view. And then 15 or 20 minutes later, Carl Henry gets himself involved with Mark Albrighton. I think Albrighton was fouling in, preventing Henry from, um, from carrying on and running away with the ball. And then Henry just backheeled him in the chest. Albrighton made an enormous meal of it, but it's violent conduct, there's no doubt. It was absolutely uh, senseless sending off. And uh, it left them without either of their first-choice central midfielders. A man down, and Villa went on to win the game with, uh, with a second Robbie Keane goal. Two great goals from Keane today. Uh, the first was good, the second was outstanding. And also look out on Match of the Day tonight for a, for a magnificent Wolves goal from Michael Keitley, who spent 17 months out of the game with injury. His first half performance here today was absolutely devastating, and he topped it with, uh, with a quite brilliant goal which, uh, which was one of two that Wolves scored in the first half. So we had absolutely everything today, really, Gabby. Steve, thank you very much. Safe journey home for you. Uh, very briefly, guys, result of the day? Result of the day? Um, oh. You could say Blackburn pinching a point. Everton keeps them out of the bottom three. But good wins for Fulham, um, West Bromwich Arab and Villa today. Mm, those mid-table teams making a bit yeah. of yeah. movement. I thought Fulham were outstanding today. 
West Brom, leaves out Odenwengi, leaves out Long, they go to Stoke mm. and they beat them. Mm. For me, result of the day. They were on a slippery slope as well, weren't they? Yes, West they were. Brom. Important to stop that rot. Thank you very much, guys, for your company. You're staying with me. You can have your say on 6.06 tonight with Mark Chapman and Jason Roberts, uh, fresh from that point picked up from Goodison Park. Uh, that's just about it from all of us here. We do go on to the red button now if you want some more reaction. Plenty of that coming from the dressing rooms of the Premier League. If not, have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Take care.